Hey what's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video M2A205 I will be talking about a chocolate shader using the new AI standard surface shader and Arnold 5. And I have uh, brought up a few references like high detail chocolate candy and I know Easter is already over but uh, I still like the shader and it's it's a nice challenge especially if you want to create like these smudges or like frozen candy like this effect where you see some some more shiny areas and I will be showing you how to create that using the new um, utility shaders like the composite or the those noise shaders so I ha also have a few other references like these guys and maybe a more glossy approach which has some nice bump effects so I I think I will go with kind of this and then it will be mixed with this a bit. So we, ha we have a few really rough frozen parts and then more shiny ones. And yeah, so let's head over to Maya and let's get started. So when I start the render, this is currently what we have. A pretty basic setup. If I can make it any bigger I can reach it so I just use my hotkey so there we go so this is the current shader and I like to work in the hypershade for this kind of effect because in the hypershade I have this nice material viewer which I like because it is inside of Maya and I can use that pretty cool so windows material viewer and to get something in here what you need to do Let's create a file texture node and like this and whatever is connected here will be red. So I actually don't know where this path is. Is there a way to copy it from here? Copy mask. I don't see it, but let's just save it somewhere. Save frame as desktop chocolate and head over to the file texture read, go to the desktop and choose the chocolate. And then we see it right inside of here. And it needs to be a sRGB input. Currently it's on raw, that's why it looks weird. So there we go, that is way better. And it is scaled because of the image resolution. But I think this is this does not matter. And then you can actually lock it. I think if you hit the solo switch up here, it should be locked to that node even on deselection. Yeah, so this is now my material viewer. And this should be now on top. All right, so the first thing I want to do is, is roughly dial in the color. And I will go for like this this lighter not as dark chocolate, but a bit lighter chocolate. So I will go to bigger resolution so we can zoom in a bit. Let's try 150%. There we go. And let's just check this area. And how many threads? Let's just stay with two. Sometimes when you just have one, it, your UI gets really sluggish. So Keep that in mind. If you, if it's sluggish, just change your um, UI threads to a bigger number, and then it should be way smoother. All right, let's show, go back one to one. There we go. All right, so heading over to the shader, I like to pick a base color, and let's see how it works this time. So I want a bit darker than it would be, something like this. And then I have the base saturation and hues, and now I want to dial it in a bit. So if you double click it, you get actually a floating window, which is more convenient, especially if you use a tablet, which I do. So let it, let's head over to hue and saturation and just desaturate it a tiny bit, and let's uh, switch it over to a bit more orangey color. And then again, a bit lighter something like this might do it I guess it seems to be a bit redder than what I have so let's change the hue a bit okay I think this is kind of what I would expect 
and then you see that there is like these like sometimes maybe not dissolved chocolate or co cocoa powder or something I know so you get these splotches of different color so I will try to mimic that with a procedural noise so let's first hide that and let's create a noise pattern and keep in mind to save it because it's still not as stable as I wish it would be so keep saving just to save your work so AI noise is the noise pattern and I like to use the isolate selected mode if you don't have this uh, menu it is in menu toolbar icons and then debug shading icon and then at the bottom there is isolate selected so if I select the noise and uh, it, it needs to be connected first so um, I don't want to ruin my color so I will plug it for now into the spec color slot and now let's um, try to create these kind of um, little color difference different differences there we go hard word for me so a little bit of distortion just to make it a tiny bit more interesting maybe two levels and now what we want to do is uh, add some contrast so we get just these highlights some at some points so to do that I will use I would have used the AL remap color from AL shaders, but it doesn't exist anymore. So all you got to do is create a um, remap HSV or whatever. Doesn't really matter. It, it's all the same. So you get the ranges, which is the same as in the AL shaders. So nothing to worry about. So out noise goes, out color of the noise goes to the color, and the color goes into the spec so no change there and now I will just change the inputs so you can see what's happening I like to invert it just so I get the black spots as my main points not sure if that did let's just revert never mind what I just did so there we go so now we have a few brighter spots this is what I wanted to create so we got that now so and now we need to somehow connect this to the base color. And to do that, let's create a constant. I think there's something called like a constant. No, that's just AI color. You see, I don't even know the names of the nodes yet. But I was pretty sure they had something like a constant color. Um, let's just see. Where is it create? window creates so let's see what we have shaders uh, textures curvature image noise what do we have we've got utility we've got flat I think that's the one I was looking for that's just a flat constant color did it create it now yeah I'm not sure why it always creates a shading engine which is, which is pretty annoying so that's something to flag maybe so okay this guy is my base color and the base color will be the red uh, the, the brown I have in, in this one so this is working so now what I want to do I want to combine those two colors so the noise or the remap and the flat color so I want to combine these two nodes so there's a new node called AI composite which is um, something like which one is it um, combine color I think AL combined color maybe I'm not entirely sure but this is just like an A plus B and then an op operation to combine them together so it's nothing really crazy going on so A is my base B C um, the white specs so this is the new spec color now and I the operation should be add or over uh, or plus so now you get these white splotches which is what I want but currently these are too strong so I need to change the output colors so they are not as bright as they are right now so I will lock my isolate mode to the last selected node which is the composite and I will then change the remap out color I think out max should do it yeah there we go I'm not sure if the mode is correct I thought it should be what is overlay no screen if that doesn't work we just uh, change the color to be more brown because this looks not it's it's not really adding it it's more like still just changing the alpha channel which is weird so 
uh, let's see if I can change the color to something brown. There we go. So now we need to make it a bit brighter. Oh, it does, doesn't. Let's see. Okay, maybe we try another thing, which we just use this guy. There we go. So I'm just uh, changing the out color in here, um, reducing these two guys to get red. And it's still way too strong, so I just really want a hint of a different color, something like this maybe. And let's connect this guy to my out color and base color, remove it from the spec, save the scene, and switch back to shading mode. Now you can see we get these white splotches. Um, it's nothing really nice just yet, but it, we will get there definitely. So this is again with the spec enabled, and you can see it's a big difference now already. So I want to change a bit the the clamping of the color of the maps here in the remap node. So th this gives really strong edges. And we want it to be really soft somehow without sacrificing the detail. What we might also do is just multiply another node on top to get this effect. Um, let's just see what happens if we add more distortion. Yeah, maybe this does it actually. If you add more distortion, we get more like these flake appearances. Yeah, so this is now kind of a little bit of a difference in there. So let's introduce more roughness to the shader. Uh, let's do that, bring in the roughness. So just kind of to eyeball what we get here. And increase the IOR a tiny bit so it's overall more shiny. I think the proper value would be around 0.45 or something because there's like a thin water coating on top. So it should be similar to a water IOR. Okay, so this looks very boring because we don't have, there's no variation in the roughness at all. So let's create that. So it's another AI noise. And this one um, will go into the spec roughness. So, but to get more control, I will create an AL, ah, not AL, a remap color, the same thing as we did above. And this one goes this time into the specular roughness the red channel. There we go. Now we already see what's going on here. Um, but obviously it is not as it should be, but it's kind of working. So let's control the noise a bit. We want it to be bigger, so I think smaller scale makes it bigger. There we go. Bigger randomization, more octaves to give a bit more detail, and then it might be a bit too much already and just bring in some distortion as if like distortion like creates like a flow effect similar to the AL flow noise so you can see that there's some gathering of of more and less of a something a substance or whatever as if there is like water drips or something okay so let's see how it looks shaded there you go it's now it's getting there it's now like kind of frosted effect but it is still too much. So if both colors would be black, it's super shiny. If both would be white, it would be super rough. So now what you have to do is dial them, dial those values until you get like a good result. So we want to have a few shiny areas. And then again, we want some broader ones. So this is now the one thing. Broad, and let's go a bit more shiny. So now we have these areas of gloss and then rough. This is pretty cool. I'm still not so happy with these color blotches. Maybe we just need to get rid of them. I'm not so sure just yet. And I think the overall color is maybe a bit too, too light. So let's change that as well in the base color. So we have this flat constant color, which is our main control. And I will just dial down the color intensity. So we get a bit darker color. And now we see those flakes. Now it actually, I think they work kind of better. It looks like they are is like a flaked, flake chocolate or something. All right, so this would be the one thing. And now I think chocolate as well absorbs some light. So we want to introduce a slight amount of subsurface scattering. 
um, because actually everything in the real world real world um, um, absorbs light so there's always something like that happening so let's zoom in this area like so and let's introduce a little bit of subsurface scattering so let's just first bring it in all the way and then dial in the colors later so let's go with something like this as the colors so what how does this look like now it's fully subsurface scattering and you can see that it is now way softer around the edges so and it gets slower to render as well but the effect is pretty cool so if I store this and I remove the, the effect you can see what's going on it just gets lighter and it absorbs all the color and all the detail and we lose the flex because I'm just using a simple color for this and not the texture but anyways let's just bring it bring it in a tiny bit so we just see a bit of softness to it like a little bit of absorption and that's all I wanted to do just a slight amount of SSS <coughs> sorry about that I just increased the scale to one so it's a proper um, it's so it's properly working to the scale because I modeled in real scale and then you should use a value of one here Okay, let's see what we got now for this whole area. And you can see it is kind of chocolatey now. So now we want to create the other shader, which is, um, no, which is here, which is this. So to achieve this, you need to create like, or I need to create a bump, a broad bump map, and then a super shiny surface. So this is the one. Let's just store this as shader one, and we create just another one. Uh, let's first compare this 100% and remove the region, frame this and progressive and I will just render this for a second and then I will, we will continue with the next shader. Alright, let's continue. So I store this image and let's change the shader a bit to create this high glossy chocolate candy so to do this i first try to create a bump map and let's do that first so let's close the viewer here um, and i'll just create a new standard surface shader like this and i just exchange the shading engines so this one goes there and then we should see the new shader being rendered here there we go so but first I will stop the render and I will connect the AI noise um, I think I will need to I'll just think about on top of my head now I did not actually prepare this tutorial so we will see what we get um, and then we have composite AI composite which will multiply those two together to, to create a more interesting result and this will go the out color or the out color red will go into a bump shader this one goes here and the out normals go I think in the normal camera I think that's a correct one let's just double check if it is the geometry there we go bump mapping that's a correct slot and I will connect those two guys and they will be multiplied together. So let's see what it actually does. I save and I open the render. So we see some noise that is correct. So let's see if we can actually dial it in to get something more interesting. And the first one let's just go here first so how did it look it looks like this so we have a I'm trying to do this kind of effect currently and then we do the broader noise which is another noise layer on top so let's try to create these flows of something of chocolate or whatever okay so this is the first one I want to have some detail I want it to be bigger so 0.25 let's try that 0.25 and 
and we want to scale it in one axis just to get these this flow of something I'm not sure it does not look ideal it's it's hard to get these things look nice with just procedurals but we will see how far we can get this to work alrighty so let's just play with the amplitude let's just try three okay it's definitely getting there I just need to invert this and then we kind of have it already because I'm looking at the dark spots now and comparing these to these holes it is kind of in the ballpark I guess that's too much yeah and now let's just invert this oh it does that don't really work does it not work yeah I need I might need to clamp them a bit but then we should have it. So, so before, let's just clamp them. AL, no, remap color. Out color goes here, out color goes here. And let's just clamp those values so we just get these white areas. Yeah, something like this. I hope it will work, I'm not so sure just yet. And then we, we see this is multiplied, so we get this detail from this map inside of there, which is what I wanted to create. And now you see that we have some detail in here. And the black is not ideal because it needs to have, like bump maps ideally go from 0.5 as the neutral one and then up and down to zero or one. So we need to create a gray color and I th I, how would we do that now? Because it is clamped to... We can just try the out color of this. Let's just see how that looks. Um, it, it might not work. How would we do that? Maybe we just... Yeah, let's just create it a bit different. I save again and I create another remap color. We can actually do a remap value. Let's see if, if that works as well. Oh, just, yeah, well, it's the same thing. That's exactly what we want. So this guy goes in the input value and then the out value is the bump value. And let's see if we can do the out max output min. Nothing is happening. It might be a remap issue or it might be a visual issue from the render view. Let's try to force retranslate it. Yes, it does not work because this remap is a single um, component attribute and it, it gets it from a uh, three component attribute. So let's do this, connect this first to the specular uh, roughness and then it should work. No, it does still does not work. Okay, let's try something completely different. We just, instead of using the remap value, we use the remap color which gives us the exact same thing and we we get it back so now we can work with that and let's try to do yeah that's what I wanted to do 0.5 here and this is now a neutral color and I guess if we look at the result right now we should see something interesting and we do you can see it looks like eaten up chocolate I guess Obviously, the bump is now too strong, so we can just dial it back down to get a really subtle effect. That's first, this color is driving, is irritating, so it's not driving me nuts, but it's irritating. So let's just connect the previous. No, let's just create a new color, sorry. AI flat, which is the these freaking shading engines out color base color flat color is the brownish tint like this and we just go a bit darker for this guy and we see what we get now so currently it looks like they are going outwards which they should not do so we need to invert the bump map to be a negative 0.2 now it's it looks like it's going inwards this is correct and let's just see how much detail we have in here 
I think we can get more detail if we go more Octaves and something like this. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to create a rougher bump which is overall on top of that again. So before we finalize this, let's just create another AI noise and another AI composite. And this guy, out color goes here, out color goes there, and then this connects to here. And they should be multiplied. There we go, we see something is happening. And what does the result look like? Isolate, selected like this, which is interesting. Before and after. So we want to multiply the color values, not from white. I think we should do something like this. Yeah, that's, I think, better. Let's just lock this to this node and play around with those values. Let's try 0.1 for the scale to get these broad, broader dents, and then we introduce a bit more detail. Yeah, that's looking cool. Let's just try 10. Nice and detail. And now we just see how much we really want to see. Okay, let's just see how it looks. And the shaded version. It's hard to see anything now. I'm not sure why that is. Let's just try again. Isolate mode. Why does it look so different? Okay, I think just because it got way darker now, the bump effect is not as apparent anymore. So let's just in, uh, make this stronger. Yeah, it's definitely working on this side. So let's just work on the roughness and dial this in, and then we see what we get. Okay. And it is definitely darker still, so let's just dial this one way dark, like this. And play around with those roughness maps. So first let's check the reference again. You see it's very glossy, so we, we just need to um, work on that, make it more glossy. And you can see there's still this high frequency noise, which we so far don't see, so there's still a bit of room of improvement. So this is, I think the noise, well, we can also try a clear code. Let's see how this works with a clear code. Then we should get really sharp reflections on top. Yeah, this is interesting effect. This might work. Uh, let's just uh, make this really broad and not as strong. So this is now a soft base layer which gets soft specular reflections and then we have this coating layer on top of that which looks very cool. Um, I think this does actually ignore the bump map. So is that really what we want? I'm not so sure. So I don't think so. So we don't, the coding as a, as, has its own normal slot right here. So what we actually can do is we can plug in a different map in there. Let's see how, how that works. Um, okay, let's create another bump 2D. There we go. Out color goes here and this guy connects to the code normal. There we go. So the code now has its own normal map, which is very interesting. Um, that's wrong mode. And let's just uh, create this, this soft ripply effect. So it's actually, I think, just adding a bit distortion to this and we should be there already. And just changing the strength of almost being not there. So what I like to do, I keep, I like to keep it on one and just uh, play around with these values. So if both are on 0.5, 
um, there is no bump. So what I do is mostly just really subtle color differences. So this is on 458 and this is on 494. What was it? 458? Yeah. So we can go a bit more down or oh, it should be HSV uh, 458 there we go how that does that look now I'm just changed to progressive mode so we see the final result yeah I think this kind of works and now if you have dialed it in kind of you can actually use this one which is now so if you now have it you get a like 0.5 reduces the effect by half and I think this is pretty close now so comparing this to this we get let's I will just render this both in um, full res and then we see how it looks all right so this is now the result and you can see there is a slight bump map here to break up the shader and this is the other shader so these are my two basic chocolate shaders and there's also an, a cool new node in Arnold, um, which is called a mix shader node. Because Arnold 5 is using closures now, which is um, a really great thing because the, sh the shader information, like the color, is only processed once. So if you use a mix shader, um, it is still very efficient. So you can now use mix shaders and mix all of the fancy shaders you want together. So to do that I will replace the shading engines again and then I will connect shader 1 here and shader 2 in the other slot right so these are now both shaders and they are being mixed 50% together um, which doesn't make sense because um, I want to create like a difference so this is now one shader this is the other shader and you can see there is no um, it's still efficient so it's not taking longer than one or the other so the mix weight will be a mask and the mask will be what will it be a checkerboard we can try a checkerboard quickly uh, checker not even sure how it will look like because I don't know how the UVs are well it does work kind of <laughs> so you can see what's happening you can see that there is like these two shaders are being mixed together based on the texture at checkerboard projection so to create a more interesting result let's try a noise again AI noise uh, let's try to use that one instead so you can see now there's a really um, small breakup so before we see the final result let's just uh, change those settings a bit so um, let's make this really broad 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 and bring in the amplitude to 3 and bring more distortion maybe more octaves more detail and what else can we do what does this do this breaks up the edges let's just see how this looks a camouflage chocolate shaders <laughs> so you can you have you can see you can see now that how this works and it's super fast and now you could create like pretty interesting results like let's just f uh, play around a bit more let's just mix just for the fun of it just another mix shader and connect this now this shader one goes here and this goes here and now I want to create another AI surface shader if I can type standard surface and this one goes to shader 2 and then we need another mix which is a AI noise again I hope it's not too confusing with all those noises and mix shaders so how does this look like now this is again a noise shader and what I want to do now is create like gold flakes you see there's sometimes you can get this chocolate with really um, with proper gold flakes in it it's like thin gold sheets I'm not sure how it's called properly but let's just try to 
demonstrate what I'm trying to achieve here. Let's go with five. And more distortion. Very interesting. Okay, and then what happens if we invert this? Okay, I think I need to multiply them now with another noise pattern. So, oops, let's just duplicate this, save it before it crashes. AI composite. Sorry for my messy node graph right now. It's because I'm just uh, playing around and testing things out. AI composite. So, A and B multiplied together. And then we need to create a different seed for one. Let's just offset the uh, time and this guy where does this connect you to the mix so this one goes to the mix okay so now what happened we have multiplied those two shaders together to create an interesting effect so it is now more broken up and let's see how how it looks so now we've got two chocolate shaders and then we've got the white the white will be a gold coating so let's create a gold shader you can definitely if you if you're lazy you can just go to presets and uh, choose a gold preset I think um, this is kind of doing the trick already um, but obviously you can um, do it a bit nicer but this is now with the gold shader applied to it so this is a very complex shader now based uh, mixed together out of three materials and I will just render for final settings and then I will be back. So this is now the final weird looking shader, but you can see how it works together with blending materials together, different chocolate types, uh, A and B, and then the result is the mix with the golden coating or whatever. So. I hope you did like this tutorial. I showed you the new tricks with the Arnold 5 shaders. And definitely I will be producing more content. And if you like this video, please uh, support me by liking it and by commenting it. And if you really want, you can visit my Patreon page and become a patron of myself. Thank you very much, guys. See you soon.